The first things that likely come to mind when you consider the most spectacular weapons in the US military inventory are presumably stealth bombers, destroyers, and tanks, but we're about to completely change your opinion. For the US military, new attack submarines are being constructed, particularly the Virginia-class Block 5 submarines, which have the ability to launch nuclear attacks in addition to being extremely powerful. The first Virginia-class submarines were initially envisioned in 1991 as a more affordable alternative to the Seawolf class of submarines, which had a per-unit cost that was roughly $1 billion more. While early technological barriers caused development to move slowly. What exactly makes these submarines so impressive? The first wave or block of Virginia-class submarines was commissioned between 2004 and 2008, since then, a new block has been commissioned every four to six years, with the first block for submarine entering service in April of 2020. An examination of the USS Vermont submarine's initial block says it all. It is the third Navy ship to bear the name of the Green Mountain State, the first, a 74-gun warship authorized by Congress in 1816, and the second, a battleship No. 20 commissioned in 1907 both bore the name of Vermont. The new USS Vermont, the first of 10 planned Virginia-class submarines, is 377 feet long with a 34-foot beam and can dive to depths of more than 800 feet. Although its maximum depth is classified when submerged, it can operate at speeds in excess of 25 knots and has a displacement of 7,800 tons fully loaded with a crew of 132 persons. Like all previous Virginia-class submarines, it is also powered by a cutting-edge, unique inner reactor, but these PHY. This is a result of its amazing onboard equipment, like the submarine's usage of a single modular mast as opposed to a collection of different masts. A unified mast serves as an all-in-one instrument for sensing the sub's surroundings, traversing bodies of water, communicating with home base, and spotting enemy signals and radar, making it incredibly helpful. Additionally, it includes a sophisticated pump jet propeller, which is superior to a standard blades propeller since it is much quieter and lowers the risk of KVA sin. Added to these two elements is an electronic ship control system. A powerful auxiliary generator and a comprehensive command and control system module a more advanced integrated combat system to increase the sub's capacity for warfare a sophisticated electromagnetic silencing device to identify magnetic mines and a nine-person lockup chamber that serves as a tiny detachable submarine to improve its ability to communicate with and detect enemies additionally. It features a powerful sonar system. The large aperture bow sonar array, which offers improved passive detection capabilities, is the system's first part. The second is a wide aperture, lightweight fiber optic sonar array that feeds the combat system of the submarine with sonar sensor input. The third is a pair of high frequency active sonars located in the sail and bow that improve anti submarine warfare, enable safer operating in coastal waters and improve under-ice navigation. Performance A low-cost conformal array high-frequency sonar, which offers high-frequency coverage above and behind the submarine, makes up the fourth component. The two last parts are TB-33 Thin Line Range Search Towed Sonar Array and TB-34 Fat Line Tactical Towed Sonar Array, both of which function as acoustic sensors to provide the submarine ears in its surroundings. The sub's heavy-hitting armaments, which consist of numerous Tomahawk cruise missiles and a handful of Mark 48 advanced capability torpedoes, are not even included in this highly complex sonar system's alleged ability to identify hostile ships up to 3,000 miles away. These missiles can be fired from either one of 12 vertical launch systems or one of two Virginia payload tubes, while these torpedoes can be fired from one of four torpedo launch systems. It's interesting to note that the payload tubes for the Virginia missiles, in particular, are likely to be fitted with Global Strike missiles, 
which have a common hypersonic glide body and a 34.5-inch two-stage launcher if the Navy's assertion that these missiles can reach every target anywhere in the world in just one hour is accurate, it means that they can travel at speeds between Mach 10 and Mach 20, or between 7600 and 15,000 miles per hour, which might significantly alter the course of future battles. However, the excellent submarines are not without a price. The latest Block 5 submarines, which are outfitted with the Virginia payload module, cost a whopping $3.4 billion each, while the Block 5s of the future are anticipated to cost approximately $245 billion each. The Virginia payload module, which accounts for a significant portion of this exorbitant cost, is so expensive because of its enormous size and capability, it measures 84 feet and is integrated into the hull. This enormous module consists of four payload tubes, each holding up to 28 Tomahawk cruise missiles, for a total of 40 cruise missiles when the sub's bow tubes are added in. The importance of the Block V submarines and their Virginia payload modules cannot be overstated, and as described by Rear Admiral David Goggins, they represent a generational leap in the Navy's submarine capability. By providing a significant upgrade to the submarine's firepower, these modules are to make the Virginia-class submarines an effective replacement for the SSGN guided missile subs, which are scheduled to enter retirement. The fleet will be able to uphold our country's superiority in the ocean thanks to these design modifications. But these expenses might soon be justified. This is due to the U.S. Navy's ambitious plans for the submarines of the Virginia class. This is due to the fact that, in contrast to their forebears, they will not only be powered by nuclear energy but also use it in their weaponry. That is not to suggest that other submarines haven't employed nuclear weapons before the block force. For instance, the U.S. government acknowledged testing the launch of one to two low-yield nuclear warheads from an Ohio-class submarine. It is nothing new for the USS Tennessee to attach nuclear weapons to seaborne ships or submarines in 2018. In fact, around 22% of the U.S. nuclear arsenal is currently deployed at sea. U.S. preparations for Block 4 go far beyond ordinary nuclear missiles, despite the fact that it is U.S. policy to neither confirm nor deny the presence of nuclear weapons abroad. This is because, even though it's likely that future submarines will be equipped with nuclear missiles, it's more impressive that the Navy intends to equip them with nuclear-powered lasers. While this may sound like something out of a Star Wars movie, at first we were even surprised because, typically, lasers don't function well underwater. However, a nuclear reactor that produces around 30 megawatts of power would provide these high-energy lasers, which will be mounted on the unified mass system and have a power range of 300 to 500 kilowatts. The submarine's power supply is not only more than adequate, but also powerful enough to prevent the laser beam from fading underwater. When battling against swarms of smaller targets like a group of hostile drones, speedboats, or anti-submarine helicopters, this high-energy laser is beneficial since it serves as a good substitute for torpedoes or missiles. With all of this going on, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that many nations outside of NATO have not been too fond of the Nebula test launches and weapon developments within the United States submarine programs. This laser weapon would give the submarine a big advantage in situations where missiles or torpedoes would be ineffective. Russia has been the program's most vocal opponent, but even congressmen disagreed on the subject. However, there were two sides to any story in politics, and the United States' main justification for low-yield nuclear weapons has been that they can be used as a defensive measure. The deployment of low-yield nuclear warheads, according to John Rood, the Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, reduces the likelihood of nuclear war by assisting in deterring Russia from starting a limited nuclear battle. General Heidening of the U.S. Army reinforced this opinion when he said that NATO and the U.S. would not retaliate to the deployment of the low-yield nuclear weapon, according to the U.S. rivals. 
Therefore, he thinks that the weapon's primary function would be to serve as a deterrence. Now, this makes some sense. After all, it is well known that American foes like Russia and China possess a stockpile of low-yield nuclear weapons. Therefore, it would be appropriate for the US to keep a store of them in order to adequately spawn if the US or one of its allies were to come under attack by one. However, when questioned in the same meeting if the US would have targets in mind for these weapons, General Haydn said, I'll just say for the record that sure there is. This is troubling since it reveals the US's willingness to deploy those weapons not only defensively but possibly offensively. Moscow has also always denied our claims that it was considering a nuclear confrontation, after all, Russia has argued that a limited nuclear conflict would unavoidably turn into a full-blown nuclear war. Sergei Rokkov, the deputy foreign minister of Russia, has called it extremely disturbing that the United States considers a low-intensity nuclear conflict to be a viable possibility. As a last point, it should be noted that US President Donald Trump withdrew the US from the INF Treaty with Russia in 2019 and that the US is not expected to renew the New START Pact, which is slated to expire in 2021 and is the only surviving weapons control agreement between the US and Russia. It is simple to understand why Russia is worried. But in late 2018, Congress approved the creation of numerous low-yield nuclear warheads for submarine-launched ballistic missiles, whether the rest of the world likes it or not. While the answer to that question is undoubtedly not apparent as of now, all we can truly do is wait and see, the issue still stands, is the USA looking to launch a nuclear war or is the country simply trying to defend against Russian aggression? We welcome your feedback. By subscribing and enabling notifications, you may remain up to date on developments in science and the military. Thank you for viewing.